We do give everyone a warm welcome to the meeting this morning and uh, we can start off. So we're going to first of all open in a word of prayer. Shall we pray? Father again we give you thanks for thy goodness to us. We thank thee that we can come and speak to thee again this morning and we can Preach the gospel concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank thee that we can come and just take a few moments to think again of the wonderful person of the Lord Jesus. And how he came into this world to seek and to save that which was lost. And we pray, Father, that today that men, women and boys and girls might know the Lord Jesus as their own Saviour. We just give you our thanks now, in the Saviour's precious and worthy name. Amen. So we're going to read in 1 Corinthians and chapter 15. 1 Corinthians and chapter 15. And we're going to just read briefly a few verses of 1 Corinthians 15. And this is what it tells us. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto the, this present, but some have fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I laboured more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. Now if Christ be preached, that he rose from the dead, how says some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we have found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God, that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which have fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead, and become the firstfruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. And we know that God will bless the reading of his precious word. So we have read there today those words in verse 3 that Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures, Christ died for our sins. You know, there are four plain facts that people need to know today. And the first one is that all are sinners. If we read in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, they both declare the simple fact that we're all sinners. 
In Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 20 it tells us that there is not a just man upon the earth. It tells us that there is none that doeth good, there is none that sinneth not. If we read in the New Testament and we read in Romans chapter 3 verse 20, of God in Romans 5 verse 12 it tells us wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin and so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned you see when God created the world back in Genesis everything about it was good everything about it was very good and what happened Man disobeyed. And sin came into the world and then destruction came. Everything was good, then started to decay. We start to get old. We start to see things decay. The flowers decay. The grass withers. The flowers start to fade. And we start to see these effects. People get older. Our skin changes. We get all the aches and pains. And we see the the effects of sin. When they start to display those famous first words of no. Nobody's taught them. Nobody's taught them to have their own self-will. It is sin. And the Bible tells us that Christ died for our sins. He came into this world to save us from our sins. What does it mean to be saved? Well, imagine a swimmer has gone into the deep water and is drowning. They cry to the lifeguard to save them. The lifeguard rushes to where they are, they pick them up in their helpless condition and they take them to shore. The lifeguard has saved them from drowning. In the same way, God provided a saviour. He provided the Lord Jesus Christ, that one who is able to rescue every single sinner. But we must put our faith and trust in him. No matter what we've done, he can save us. There is nobody too bad, and there is nobody too good. It's not about what is good, because the Bible tells us we're all sinners. There is none of us that are good. You see, we look at it on our estimation. And the, the perfect example, I think, of that is a child. You know, if I say to my children, you need to be good. I can think of at least one of them who will say to me, you know, Dad, I've been good today, haven't I? And I might look and might think, well, you know, you did wriggle. You did get off your chair several times. You did drop all your toys on the floor. You did do this and you did do that. It wouldn't be my estimation of good. Because my estimation of good is that you sit on that chair and you don't move. And you don't wriggle. And you don't drop anything. You see, my view of what is good, and maybe one of my children's view of what is good, is different. And that is the same with God. Our view and God's view is different. God has a high standard. And nobody can meet that standard. Our sins separate us from God. And our good is not good enough. That is why we needed a saviour. That is why God sent his son. And we have heard it clearly over the last few days and weeks. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a saviour. Who is the saviour? Well the angel said, who is Christ the Lord? The father sent the son to be the saviour of the world. So what does it mean to be saved? It means to be rescued. We need a saviour, we need to be rescued from our sins. 
You know, the Bible tells us that God loves sinners. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God gave his best. He gave his Son. He gave his Son who was unique. He'd never done anything wrong. The Bible tells us that he didn't sin. He knew no sin. In him was no sin. He could not sin. He was absolutely perfect. the world. You know, the world includes every man, every woman, every child, every person who identifies as whatever they want to identify for. Christ died for them. It is personal. And to make it personal, you can say this morning that God loves you. And he loves you. Those that we love, sometimes it's hard for us to love them. They do something wrong and we suddenly feel that, you know, I don't really love them anymore. And then we uh, reset ourselves and we think, actually, no, we still love them. But sometimes we can be superficial in our love. We can say, I don't love you anymore. You know, there's that... That uh, song is now the sing at Christmas. Last Christmas, I give you my heart. And the very next day, I give it away. It doesn't matter. That's not love. God loves us just as we are. But our sin separates us from God. So something has to be done. There has to be a change. God loves us. So, why do we need to be saved? Because of our rebellion against God. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He died for us. He gave himself for us. And in Romans 5 verse 8 it tells us, But God demonstrated, he commended us, his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's what he's done. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, it tells us that Christ also hath once suffered. That's very important. He suffered once for sins. The just. For the unjust. That he might bring us to God. Being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Notice it tells us that Christ also once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, not bring God to us. See, that's very important because God hasn't moved. God has not stopped loving us, but it was us who went away from God. It was us that decided to seek other things. We had no time for God. We had no love for God. But the Saviour has died for us. He died for sinners. He was sacrificed for the sins of the whole world. And in Galatians 2 verse 20, if we are believers, we can say, the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, the Lord Jesus, he died. And he died for us, but that wasn't the end. That wasn't the end. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree? That one who came as that baby in Bethlehem, he gave himself and he died. But the Bible told us, that verse told us Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. But it also told us he was buried. And it also told us that he rose again on the third day. He's alive. Now today people say, you know, well, Jesus died. Some would even say he didn't really die. But you know, he did really die. And there were witnesses at that cross that he died because there were two men who wanted to have the Lord Jesus 
and they wanted to take his body down from the cross and they wanted to bury him and Pilate said is he dead already and they sent soldiers to go to the cross and they went and they broke the legs of one of the thieves on the right hand side and they went and they broke the legs of the thief on the left hand side and when they came to the Lord Jesus on the middle tree he was dead already they didn't break his legs they put a spear into his side and out of his side came blood and water and people far cleverer than me have said blood and water are separated whilst we're alive but when we die blood and water will come out he was dead he was taken from the cross he was put in a brand new tomb across that tomb there was a seal because the religious leaders said, you know, the disciples, they might come and take him. Because he said he was going to rise from the dead. So they put a seal on the tomb. But you know, that couldn't stop him. He was buried. He rose again on the third day. Well, he was seen. First of all, he was seen of Cephas, Peter. Then of the twelve. And then he was seen of about 500 men at once. And then he was seen of James, and then he was seen of the apostles. He was seen of all these people. Ah, but then, here is the eyewitness account, he was seen of me also. Well, this was Paul. Ah, well, Paul, you know, he's not going to tell us the truth, is he? Then what did Paul say? I am least of the apostles. That I am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. You see, all are sinners, but all can be saved. Here, Paul, who writes these words for us, he was one who persecuted Christians. He was one who put Christians in prison. He was one who was there when Stephen was stoned to death for being a Christian. He was one who wanted nothing to do with the Lord Jesus. He persecuted Jesus. He persecuted Christians. He thought he was doing the right thing. But one day when he was on that road to Damascus, the bright light from heaven shone and blinded his eyes. And he realized, he realized that the Lord Jesus was who he should be serving and who he should be following. And then he started to follow Christ. He then started telling people about Christ, one who he once opposed. He did terrible things. He said that he was the chief of sinners. He wasn't saying it in a boastful way. But he really believed that he was the worst person. But God saved him. So it doesn't matter how good we are. It doesn't matter how bad we are. If we are in our sins, we're not going to heaven. But if we trust in the Lord Jesus, he will save us. If we turn to him, he will save us. Because all that believe are justified. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of works, it is the gift of God. Not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. You know, if we could just go our own way to heaven, we'd be boasting, wouldn't we? You know, we'd be saying, well, I, well, I did this to get to heaven. And I did that to get to heaven. And we'd all be put, patting ourselves on the back. You know, we don't go to heaven by our good. Because our good's not enough. We only go to heaven by putting our faith and trust in the person who died for us. The person who loves us. The person that wants us to trust him. In John 5, 24, the Lord Jesus said, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. In Romans 10, verse 9 to 10, it tells us, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth 
the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The Lord Jesus, he died for our sins. According to the scriptures, he was buried, and he rose again. He is alive today. And Paul goes on to say, if there was no resurrection, Christ was not risen. Well, you know, we waste our time. If the Lord Jesus is dead, we waste our time today. This message that we're preaching, there's no hope. But you know, the Lord Jesus is risen. He promised. In John 14, he said, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. The Lord Jesus he died. He was buried. He rose again. He is now in heaven. But he's coming again. And he's coming for those who put their faith and trust in him. He loves us. It's unmerited God's love. He offers us a free gift that we don't deserve. That we cannot earn. But there is a responsibility to receive it, to that, receive that gift which he has given, to accept it. For if we don't accept it, we will not be saved. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And he that believeth on him is not condemned. Because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You know, people say today, why does God allow all these things to happen? You know, why does God allow children to be murdered? Why does he allow all the evil in this world? Why does he allow these things to happen? Well, you know, we've lived our lives saying we don't need God. We've lived our lives in, we don't want God. And then when God leaves us to our own devices, who do we blame? We blame God. Why does God allow this to happen? Well, for most of the time we've forgotten about him. We've denied his very existence. The Bible tells us that he that doesn't believe on him is condemned already. Because of our unbelief. You see, God does not send us to hell. God doesn't send us to hell because the Bible tells us, and I've already explained it earlier, that we've all sinned. We've all come short of God's standard. So we're already on the way to hell. We're already away from God. But he sent his son to save us. That we might trust him. That he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. Well, just as we finish. You know it's now the 1st of January 2023. People reflect. They reflect on 2022. They reflect on the good things that have happened. They reflect on the bad things that have happened. For many, it would have been a bad year when people who have died, illnesses, sufferings. And they'll look forward to 2023 with a hope that things will be different. But it's not guaranteed, is it? It's not guaranteed. We're not guaranteed a new year. We say a happy new year, don't we? We say all the best. But we don't actually know what 2023 is going to have in store for us. 
We don't know. But one thing we do know is that the Lord Jesus, he died for us. He came to save us. And if we know him as our own saviour, we can rely on him. And we can trust him as we go into a new year. That whatever happens, we will be with him. When the dying thief on the cross, when the Lord Jesus died, there were two of us on the cross with him. One of them suddenly had a change of heart. You know, the two thieves on the cross, they were mocking him. They were laughing at him. They were shouting at him. But then one of them changed their mind. And he turned around and he said, do you not fear God? Seeing we're in the same condemnation. For we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. In other words, he was saying, we are guilty. We've done wrong, but this man has done nothing wrong. And then he suddenly turned to the Lord Jesus and said some strange words. Because he was dying that day. But he said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He was dying. The Lord Jesus was dying. But suddenly he believed that the Lord Jesus was going somewhere he wasn't. And the Lord Jesus replied back to him and he said, today, today you will be with me. Today you will be with me. That man died. And he was with the Lord Jesus. The other one who died was not with the Lord Jesus. You know, when we die, where will we go? Where will we be? Will we be with Christ? Or will we be without Christ? He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. Shall we pray? Father, again, we thank thee for the Lord Jesus. We thank thee for his love to us, for his grace, his mercy. And we just thank thee again, Father, for the wonderful offer of salvation. Which Neither is there salvation found in any of us. For there is none of a name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We just... Look to thee now, and as we start in this new year, we pray for thy blessing and thy help to be upon us. And we give thee our thanks in the Saviour's precious and worthy name. Amen.